Hello guys. Welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. So today we are going to see the question trapping rainwater. Let's quickly go through the problem statement. Given n non-negative integers representing an elevation map where the width of each bar is 1, compute how much water it can trap after raining. So let's just understand this question. If we draw the bars according to the given array, this is what we get. And if we are said to fill the water in this shape, the water will accumulate in the valleys. So this is where the water gets accumulated. So how do we find how much water is there on each bar at each index? Suppose we take this index 5. So the water accumulated at index 5 would be the valley formed by the maximum in left and the maximum in right. So what is the actual level? Because here we can see that maxes are different. So it would be the minimum of these two max. And since here the height of this bar is zero, it would not affect our answer if we do not consider it. But if we see the case of index nine, the maximum water, just the water that can be accumulated would need us to subtract the height of this bar. So this is the actual gist of the question that we need to find the maximum in left and the maximum in right and then take the minimum of both and then according to the height of the building at the index, we can find the amount of water that can accumulate on that building or the bar. So that's all that is written in this algorithm. So calculate the max on left, calculate the max on right and then the water on the building will be minimum of max from left and right minus the height of building. So the question is how do we calculate this maximum? Simply we can say that there are two approaches for now that is a brute force and using an arrays. The brute force approach for each bar you would need to find the maximum on the left by looping till the start, maximum on the right by looping till the end and then apply the formula that we had got. This approach would end up having a complexity, the time complexity of O of n square. While the space complexity here would be O of 1 as we are not taking any additional space. How do we reduce the time complexity? That could be done by using an extra space. So we know that we are doing an additional step of going to the left and right all the time. So we can save the maximum in the left and maximum in the right in separate arrays and then calculate the water on this building. So we will have these loops to calculate the max, left max, right max and then once we have these two, we'll have to loop to find the water. But we do not need these many loops, we can just combine these into one loop. But just for the understanding purpose, I have shown you two different loops. Okay. So let's just start coding this one. So first we'll take an integer n that will store the length of the height. Then we'll take two arrays. Which would be of size n. Now we need to return water. So we take water and at the end we will return this water. In between we will have loops. So for we will do a combined looping thing instead of doing the two separate loops. So here at the same time we will keep on adding right max and left max both. So if, if i is 0 then left max of 0 or you can say i is equal to height of 0 or height of i and right max of n minus 1 or the last index we are first filling up the last index in the first index height of n minus 1 now comes the else part so left max of i would become something at the same time we'll find right max of n minus i minus 1 n minus 1 minus i okay so which would be equal to something what would the left max be it would be simply max of 
height of i and the previous left max while the right max would be the max of height of n minus i minus 1 and right max of n minus i. Now that we have the values, we can again loop. And this would be minimum of right max and left max minus height of i. So this is all about the array method. Okay, let's initialize this. I missed it. And if you submit this code, that's accepted. So this was one of the method. Now let's go on and see the next method, which is using stacks. Here we'll take the same example and we'll take a stack and add the index of these bars into the stack. Till when we'll keep pushing the index till we get an index for which the height is higher than the height of the top element. So here we can see that the height for index 2 which is 0 is lesser than the height at index 3. So we are getting a increasing height and we stop over there. Okay so after this what we do is we need to start our calculations. On what do we calculate? We will calculate on 2. So we will calculate the water between its left and right. So water between its left and right. Here what becomes the left? The left becomes the one that is there in the top of the stack and the right becomes the one that we were going to push in the stack. So what's the formula? The formula here is different. It is distance multiplied with the level that should be there. We'll understand the importance of distance in a while. For now let's just see how this is getting calculated. Here we are taking the minimum of top of the stack which is the left element and the minimum of height of i which is the right element. So this would be the water level and the height of the popped element which is this element itself. So this is the same formula that we used earlier also. Right now that you have understood the formula let's see how we calculate the distance. The distance is the one between the left and the right which would be 3 minus 1 and we'll subtract one more to get just the one in the between. So if we use this formula, we get the water here as one unit that we can see. Now let's take another example. If you are at index 6, what you'll do is you'll calculate for index 5 because you'll get that the height of index 6 is greater than height of index 5. So here according to the formula, again we get the water between these two points as one unit. Now is the fascinating part. As we move on to this index 7, here we find out that the distance plays an important role. Here the distance becomes 7 minus 3 minus 1 which gives us 3. And the water level that should be there is minimum of height of left and right which gives us 2. And from that we subtract the height of popped element which is 1. So this tells us that this part is filled and we need to fill above it which gives us 3 into 1 which is 3. Now that we have understood the concept, let's start coding for this. So since we are using a stack, we would first need to initialize the stack. Next we'll have two variables. First is the current variable and the second is the water. Both will be initialized to 0 and then we'll start looping. So while current is less than height dot length which is we'll go from 0 to n and in that we'll be checking the condition for stack. So while stack is not empty and the current height is greater than the height of the top element of stack. So we'll perform some operations or otherwise we'll just push. 
will push current and do a plus plus so what operations do we perform here first pop which we are going to take in a variable and then we'll check if stack is becoming empty or not. If it becomes empty, then there's no need of performing the further operations. We can just break from this while loop. Otherwise, what we do is find the distance, which would be current minus stack.peak minus one and we'll find the water that is going to be filled. So taking a variable fill which would be distance multiplied by minimum of two heights we were taking that is current and stack dot peak from which we subtract height of top. Now that we have got fill we need to update water that's it return water so so now that we have got a expected output we can just submit this code and see whether it gets submitted or not and it gets submitted this was the stack method let's try to improve it further let's move to the more optimized version of the solution which is using the two pointers approach so what we do is we'll use two pointers i and j which are positioned at 0 and n minus 1 and we'll have some variables which would store the max left and right for our bars. And lastly, the result variable water. In this approach, what we would be doing new is that we will only consider the positions we are currently on and we have seen, not the ones we have not encountered. So here we'll consider 0 and 11. And we can see that there is a slope on the left side, which means that the water will accumulate on the left. So we would be processing the ith pointer. Now to calculate the ith pointer, the water at ith index, we would be taking the maximum left minus the height of i and we will add it in the water that was already accumulated previously. So for that, now we see that we would need max left. So we will need to update max left, which is going to be the maximum of the previous max left and the current height. In this case, it would be 0 and the height of i is also 0, water is also 0, so everything becomes 0. Now, since we have processed the ith position, we will move the ith pointer one step ahead and this becomes our new i and j. Since both are equal, we will again calculate for i. And here we can see that the maximum left would now get updated because we have not seen a height so tall. So this becomes 1 and the water becomes still 0 as max left is 1 and the water is still 0. Now we will again move the ith pointer ahead. Again there is a slope and so we calculate ith pointer. Here we can see that there is a building or there is a bar which would prevent the water from flowing. So it would get accumulated here and as we can see that the water here becomes 1. The max left could still be 1 because there is no height that we have encountered which is greater than 1. So we will just update the water. So we move towards right. So i moves one step ahead. And here we can see that the slope is towards right. So we process this right. The max right over here gets updated to 1. And the water still remains 1 because there will not be any water on this building or this bar. Since we have updated this, we will decrement the jth pointer and move inside. So here we can see that both the bars are equal and so we process left and now increase the height of the left and so update max left which becomes 2. The water still remains 1 as there is no water that is going to be filled on top of this bar. We move i and again keep doing the same. Here the slope is towards left, so we fill the water and we'll keep on doing the same thing till i and j are not crossing over. At the end, we will get the result in our variable water. So now that we have understood this approach, let's go and write some code for that. Okay, so firstly, we'll take four variables, i, j, max left, max right and water.
then we loop while i is less than j and now we check if height of i is less than or equal to height of j. So this loop is dedicated for updating max left and this is for max right and processing the right. So max left becomes mat dot max of height of i water becomes water plus max left minus height of i and i becomes i plus plus similarly max right becomes max of max right and height of j water becomes max right minus height of j and j becomes j minus minus at the end return water so let's submit this code and there it got submitted here's the time complexity for all the methods that we have seen for the brute force the time complexity is of n square and the space complexity is of 1 while when we were using arrays the time complexity was o of 2n because we were having two for loops which gives us o of n and the space complexity was also o of 2n which is equivalent to o of n while using the stacks the time complexity is o of n and the space complexity is also o of n while in the two pointers approach time complexity is o of n and the space complexity is o of 1 so that's it for today guys Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.